Pause. All right. Uh, for a novice filmmaker, what sort of camera would you recommend? If a person, I, I'm, 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 uh, in my experience with the students, I've seen that uh, because I teach students of different, uh, not only expatriates, uh, locals, nationals also, I mm -hmm. teach them. What I feel, the first thing what they do is they go to a shop, they want to buy a camera, they ask the salesman, give me a camera. Mm -hmm. The salesman just gives, uh, gives them a camera. Sometimes some some people they are willing to spend more money but they don't know what to buy they just get what the salesman says because he feels that some camera is not selling so he wants to sell it so yeah. poor people they don't understand but they buy the camera they come home they shoot but the pictures are not good i would suggest and i also to tell my students if preferably if you can buy a camera because an electronic a video camera has got single ccd and three CCDs. Three CCD cameras now it is available. So they have to go for a, try to go for a three CCD camera mm -hmm. because the quality of picture is good. And only buying a camera is not enough. Everyone has got pieces at home. They just need to have a wire, a fire wire connection from the camera to the PC and they should have a software. Mm. They can edit their program. Yeah. So it's simple as that. But then have to work hard. Yeah. Dr. Raja, you said uh, simple as that, but you have to work hard. Yeah. So tell me your experience about teaching students from this region at the Abu Dhabi Foundation. How do you find the response to your classes? Are they really very interested? Yes, they are interested. I, I feel, especially I feel the ladies, women are more interested in learning about this. They feel that they have to create something. They want to really create something. But after, when they come into the class, they feel it is too heavy for them. But once if they complete the class and they do their project, and when they see the project on the screen, they feel so happy and they start again doing things. So it's mandatory to complete a project yeah, while doing yes, the course? Yes. Mm -hmm. They have to make, it's known as a graduation project, they have to make a film. Uh, it should not be less than two minutes and not more than ten minutes. Has any student of yours made some remarkable work? That is yeah, a lot of students are made, but one student has really made a good story she has made and a national girl she she's a uae national, UAE national. Mm -hmm. and she has done a, it was really surprising when i saw the film because she took the idea from a newspaper mm -hmm. and she has done a wonderful it's only about three minutes but really nice what was the subject about it's about child rape mm -hmm. and uh, i asked her from where did she get she said i was reading a paper i saw the police uh, report was there i saw one small lesson so i developed from that but she has made a small child act and so wonderfully she has done the job. And people who have seen it also appreciated the work. And there are other students who also have made films. But all are made in a different style. But this everyone appreciated because she took it from a newspaper, yeah. the story. To make the three-minute film, how many minutes would she have shot? 
Uh, usually we say it's one is to five and one is to, but uh, you know, new filmmakers, they have to shoot more mm -hmm. because they do not know how the shots are going to be. Okay. But very important thing, every filmmaker <coughs> or every person who's going to start uh, serious filmmaking is they should understand there are, same, there are shots which they have taken, like close-up shots, mid shots, then long shots, mm. then how they have to connect each shots. So continuity of dressing, continuity of shots, continuity of movement, so many things are there mm. which they should understand. Yeah. Once if they understand, it's easy. Mm. But understanding is a bit, uh, yeah. they should learn. Dr. Raja, moving into your personal life, how did this cinema happen to you in the first place? Cinema, I think when I was, uh, what, 16 years old, when first we went and uh, I, I was going, I, we went with my parents, I went and saw a movie. I used to go and see movies with my parents. Then I wanted to become an actor, not a director. But then I went for training and all, but then I felt I also acted in some small uh, roles and all in Karnataka. But then I felt uh, the technical side I was more interested in. That's how I entered into this. It was just a hobby before. Like all the uh, uh, students have started now like a hobby. Yep. It started as a hobby, then it went on went on, went on, mm. then I've landed here. But you have many remarkable documentaries yeah. to your credit. you want to talk about some of them? Yeah, I did a documentary. I've done a uh, lot of documentaries, which I got. Uh, but the best documentary I like this, it's about the public awareness on human eye. Uh -huh. So people had a bad, I mean, they didn't know the real fact. They said, okay, transplant, transplantation of the eye. They didn't know the real fact, how it is done. And that I could do. I could do a documentary. And I got an award from uh, Lions International for the best documentary made on human eye. Then uh, I got a national award also, international award, for the same documentary. You're also on the board of several uh, cinema organizations, yes, yes. isn't it? Could you name a few? I was. Okay. Since in India. While you were there in well, India. Yeah. Okay. But since I've come here, it's all broke now. Okay. And now uh, you also had a film on Ibn Battuta. Yes. What do you want? Tell us about the journey into that film. Now, Ibn Battuta was a 14th century traveler. And uh, he has given so many, he has spoken about so many places, their cultures. And uh, we wanted to uh, do something on that. Uh, my boss, His Excellency Ahmad, Mohammed Ahmad Al Swedi, he is the Secretary General of Cultural Foundation. Mm -hmm. He's a person who's very much interested in uh, going deep into the history of uh, the world. Yeah. So with this uh, uh, help and with this support for me, I went to different places. Like there's one account of a place known as Hormos in Iran. In the 14th century, what even Batuta says is that there were 40,000 people living in that small island and it was one of the richest island. Today I went and visited the place, there is only 2,500 people and it is one of the poorest island now. So we don't know, but at that time, 14th century, they say that it was rich. Mm. But now, it is, I went and saw it and also shot the place. Okay. Now, with relevance to the film industry in this region, there's a, n a whole lot of interest is being generated by the Indian cinema industry and the ho Western Hollywood section. Do you think it's going to really evolve in the future years, this region? This region now really needs Arabic industry. Arabic film industry? Yes. Mm -hmm. It really needs an Arabic film industry and there are a lot of uh, interested people. There are a lot of nationals who have studied abroad, mm -hmm. filmmaking. And I have also watched some movies made by them abroad, really good movies, short movies. Mm -hmm. Their um, graduation movies and all, we've, I've seen it and it's really good. But here, that is important now, that is need to be developed. Indian movies, okay, they come, they have all the infrastructure in India, they are doing it. But here, local movies, I think one day it will start. Okay. Dr. Raja, you recently acquired a doctorate in cinema from the UK. Could you talk about the subject that you worked on? Uh, the subject is, my thesis was about uh, audience reaction and realism in cinema. As I was saying earlier, if any filmmaker has to make a film, he has to see, he has to know the reaction of the audience. Without a reaction of audience, there is, uh, there is no cinema at all. 
or video at all, whatever it is. For example, if you take about realism, there is a movie which I studied really well is about the uh, color purple. Mm -hmm. And that movie is about uh, a black woman. But why that movie I took, I choose that movie as a realism in cinema is, there is so many things connected in this. There is tragedy, there is comedy, everything mixed in it. That's the reason why when I went through this, I also tried to study about some Indian cinemas. Why Indian cinemas are becoming successful is because it has got all the thing which is needed for a human being. Mm -hmm. No one wants to sit, as I said earlier, no one wants to sit in the cinema theatre and see that throughout the film they keep crying. No, they would like to cry but a little bit of laughter they need, mm. a little bit of uh, something to go away from that uh, sadness, so all this is needed. Mm. So that is, it. that is the realism in cinema. And one more thing I came across when I did my research because I spoke to a lot of youngsters when I was doing my research. I did, I did the research and uh, I spoke to the students of uh, University of Granada in Spain because when I was there. Then I spoke to a lot of people from other countries where all I traveled. And then what I found out is that youngsters, when you ask them, why do you go to see a movie, they say, ah, because good girls are there. So most of the youngsters, they say that a cinema it's not a cinema if there is no woman in it. Mm -hmm. And that I think most of us should agree also. Mm. Because without woman, there is no cinema. Mm. And mainly the films are, usually the films are connected with women. Yeah. So that's what the conclusion I mm -hmm. came across. You deduce that <coughs> women are very essential yeah. to filmmaking. Yeah. For the subject of a cinema. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Raja, you have taught and trained so many students in the art of filmmaking. What about oh, your own children? Are they following in your footsteps? Uh, they are interested, but uh, I don't know because the eldest one, she completed her BSc in, uh, in computer science, she's in Dubai. And the youngest one, she's in the 12th in uh, Abu Dhabi. And uh, they are interested, but I don't know how far because they don't come and ask me that they want to be trained and all that. Yeah. But they watch movies, they give their comments on movies, they watch my documentaries, they also comment on that. Are they your best critic? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> what is the current project you're working on? Is there a film, a documentary that you're currently working on? The same, even Batuta, it's not completed. It's okay. a big project. Uh -huh. Now I have uh, I have traveled to many places, like uh, I've gone to Algeria, I've gone to Egypt, I've gone to... Uh, France, I've gone to uh, Spain, like uh, all these places I've gone. And there are so much, so many places, other places to go because even Batuta traveled to many other places, including India. So it's a India. full length feature film? It's not a feature film, it's mm. documentary of each place. Okay. <coughs> what even Batuta said in the 14th century and what is now. Oh, you're bringing so the contrast. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Comparing it. Okay. So this is what. Uh, mm. Anything that you wish to add to future prospective filmmakers? Filmmakers, if they are willing to work hard, and if they have, and I don't believe in one thing, people saying that, oh, I don't, I'm not creative, I cannot do anything because I'm not creative. I don't believe in that. Every human being is creative, but they have to develop it. Once they develop that, they can do anything, and film is one of that. Once if they start making films, then they will not go out of that line. They will always stick to it mm. because it's an interesting way. Captivating medium. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Raja, for this very interesting conversation. We hope for all those watching what you had to say, we'll get into this new avenue of creativity. I hope so. Thank you. We were in conversation with Dr. Raja Balakrishnan, who's been telling us this past half hour the know how of filmmaking. Films are a very vibrant media and can captivate even the youngest minds. And with the advanced technology that's available today, all of us can dare to explore this medium. At least start and make a beginning. With that, we sign off from this edition of First Person. Until next week, same time, from all of us in this crew, this is Vasanti Sundram wishing you a pleasant week.
first person.